The valley of the Hualaga River in northern Peru produces a large share of the world's coca, the raw material from which cocaine is made. Most towns in the valley are thriving commercial centers. Juanju is no exception. The military are very much in evidence here. It is a region where Sandero Luminoso and Tupac Amaru guerrilla movements have many bases. The guerrillas have the support of the local people, whose interests they serve. Everyone arriving for a public meeting is thoroughly checked. Coca is part of the traditional way of life on the slopes of the Andean mountain range. Producers do not want their traditions sacrificed to serve any government's interests. They're protesting at the effects of recent state policies. U.S. trained anti-drug squads are moving in, raiding and destroying illegal plantations. In Peru, this means that 95% of all coca crops are under threat. Not all coca trade is illegal. The leaf is cultivated and exported for medical purposes, for example. But in the last decade, demand for the drug cocaine has boosted the illicit production of the raw material. However, whether it's illicit or not, coca sustains the local economy. Workers in most plantations get paid in kind. They chew it while they work and use coca to purchase basic necessities. In recent years, the expanding trade has led more and more villagers to abandon their homes and move to coca-growing regions where work and therefore economic security are assured. This village was devastated by the recent earthquake that shook the region. Support for anti-government guerrillas is strong here. In return for a form of tax, the guerrillas secure higher prices for coca leaf. This ensures them the backing of local populations whose livelihoods depend on it. While the authorities are intensifying the war against trafficking, Tupac Amaru and Sendero Luminoso are gaining ground in the whole of northern Peru. Previous government policies have failed dismally. Growers were encouraged to replace their coca crops with cereals. Some of them did so. But now, peasant leaders and environmentalists claim that food crops have been dying recently. Ever since nearby coca plantations were sprayed by helicopters from an anti-drug police base, which is funded and directed by the US Drug Enforcement Administration. Agronomists identified the source of the damage as a fungus, which can mutate and attack crops other than coca. Its spread in the valley coincided with reports of spraying more than a year ago. Another grievance is that the government failed to provide an adequate transport system for the sale of rice and other foodstuffs growers had switched to as an alternative to coca. As a result, tons of rice and corn are piling up in warehouses like this one. Here, the grain has been stored for so long that it has been attacked by weevil. Much of it is unusable. Training anti-drug squads is part of Washington's strategy. The aim is to reduce the supply of cocaine to the United States by attacking drug syndicates at source in Latin America. This has had some results in Colombia and Bolivia, but drug barons from those countries moved some of their smuggling operations to Peru. In an effort to slow down their activities, Peruvian law enforcement agencies last year destroyed more illegal coca plantations than ever before. In turn, this has tightened the guerrillas' hold on local populations who suffer the consequences of anti-narcotics operations directly. Left without alternative means of production, they turn to those they see as the only allies they have in their fight for survival. Peru is becoming a major producer of finished cocaine as well. To convince Washington that the government truly means business, Peruvian agents claim to have destroyed more laboratories and seized more cocaine than in previous years. Stocks of the white powder are burnt publicly in a great blaze of publicity as a deterrent to smugglers. But the action appears to have had little impact on the production of the drug. According to experts, cocaine production in Latin America rose from just under 700 to 900 metric tons in the last two years. Villagers in the Andean mountains insist they must be allowed to retain their traditions. They're merely the victims of big operators attracted by the large profits that can be made in drug trafficking. The state-owned Eneco enterprise processes all legal sales of the leaf, which is purchased at legal points like this one to supply the traditional Andean markets or for legal pharmaceutical exports. Official figures put at only one and a half tons the total amount of coca exported legally. Half of this is bought by the United States. 
However, some 95% of the local economy depends on coca leaf production in Peru's Andean region. For thousands of years, coca has been at the center of religious, social, and economic activity in the Andes. Peasants use it to stave off hunger and fatigue, but more importantly, they exchange coca for food and other goods and use it to gain credit or clear debts. As such, it is a lifeline for the most impoverished members of Peru's society.